Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to give you an update. This will be about episode 8 of the 1000 horsepower Forester build. Apologize for it being a while. We have a lot of projects going on and this kind of got put on the back burner due to uh, a bunch of other projects come up. I'm not sure where this is actually going to be, uh, or excuse me, what timeline this is going to be posted on. But you know, we do have the green uh, new rally car back now and uh, we have a couple other things in the works. So unfortunately the Forester has been put on the back burner. But time to give you guys an update. I actually already filmed this a little while back with the new camera that I have, but uh, still having some trouble dialing in the uh, Canon for uh, autofocus and whatnot. So I just watched the footage and it's not great. So we're just going to do it over again on the GoPro so we can get this uh, footage out there for you guys and then I'll work on the camera later. So um, Forrester update. Let's uh, bring you around here and show you what we got going on. So we have uh, everything basically in place. The car should be started here soon. We did have to put this car on a haul tech. I don't know if I inserted the clip from that, but if now, if not, I will insert it now. Uh, after Cobb pulled the flex fuel capability and speed density for uh, these 32-bit ECU cars, we kind of had to go with the uh, haul tech. And honestly, uh, it probably should be on a haul tech anyways with how crazy the setup is. And the green new rally car build is getting a full haul tech suite. So uh, we might as well get used to it and just uh, bite the bullet and have some of the awesome tuning features that you can get with a standalone ECU. So, anyways, back to the build. We have uh, everything mocked up, a couple uh, things left to wire up. So tomorrow I will have a time lapse of uh, my friends Kyle and David wiring up a few things here, like the fuel pressure sensor, since we don't have the cop kit anymore. This has to go to the ECU. The intake air temp sensor that's going in the piece that goes to the throttle body there. And the flex fuel kit, which is hidden down there. After that, we have some nitrous solenoids and purge valve to wire up. The fuel pump for the, uh, this is the third fuel pump for the uh, alcohol container for the nitrous wet system. And a fitting that needs to go on the uh, nitrous fuel regulator. And we just have to tighten a few things up. Um... Now, the AOS, uh, I need to fabricate to go in that corner. I'll probably record that. Uh, the stock IAG bracket puts it just a little bit too close to this big bore throttle body, so I kind of need to extend it about two and a half inches so it sits right here. And then I can wire that up. Or not wire it up. I can hook up the piping. And obviously, with this manifold, we don't run a expansion tank anymore, and the 04 Forrester XT radiators do not have a fill cap. So technically, there's no way to put coolant in the car. Um, luckily... The coil rad racing radiator for the 06 and up Foresters um, can fit on a 0405 as long as you tee into the overflow tank. But on the other side of this radiator, there is a cap on the, uh, oops, it's over here, on the fill. Let's see if you can reposition this here so you can see it. So they add a cap to this one. So this is uh, the radiator we're going to move to. It's a stock size. It's a racing line, but uh, it's a good upgrade to have anyways. But now we can fill it through here, and then we're going to use the uh, IAG AOS as sort of like the, the uh, expansion tank. Uh, it'll be a little bit more challenging to bleed, but there's nowhere to mount a reservoir on here. And I don't want to crowd up the engine bay any more than it has to be. So we've talked about this in... Um, other videos of the build, but basically this car's uh, got a lot of stuff in the engine and it's pretty complicated because it is fully functioning stock car. We have air conditioning, we have Apple CarPlay, heated seats, everything. But it's also got three fuel pumps, a nitrous wet system, a bunch of other things that you wouldn't normally have in a car. So uh, we're limited on inputs, or excuse me, uh, outputs from the Haltech Elite ECU without going with a PDM and the digital dash. And we also have limited room in the engine bay. So that's kind of uh, adding to the complications of the build. However, the goal with this is to make it the most practical four-digit horsepower Subaru that you can make. Practical in quotes. Um, it's not going to be a daily driver of sorts, but it is something that you could drive frequently. And it should still be fun um, because of the 6266 being a quick spooling mid-sized turbo that can still get you around 800 wheel. And then the nitrous system um, giving us that last couple hundred horsepower so that we can hopefully soar past that thousand horsepower mark. Um, that being said, you know, Subarus typically are a little bit laggy, so you wouldn't want to put a turbo this size on a car that you would expect to drive like uh, one that has a stock 
VF48 like an STI or whatnot, but this should be the best compromise for the uh, power levels that we're trying to achieve. So um, I'm going to insert some footage of these guys wiring up that stuff while I am finishing some fabrication on the AOS mount. I'm probably going to show uh, putting the radiator in just as some B-roll and I have a list of a couple things left that we need to finish before Steve from Pulls on Tuning, who you know, you guys know by now, tunes every one of our cars, every one of our customer builds, rally cars, it doesn't matter, anything from stock power to four digit horsepower, we always use Steve at Pulls on Tuning. So he'll be here next weekend to get this thing fired up, which is pretty exciting. So we got a lot of work to do and uh, I need to stop rambling on and let's get to it. So we got the new radiator installed. That went easy. Um, the coil red stuff is really nice. I did notice that it looks like it's pushing it a little far forward and there's um, potential touching issue on the plastic shroud right there. So uh, I need to either redo these brackets to pull them in closer or keep an eye on the... Uh, you might be able to see it right there that it's just about touching. But it'll be okay for startup and I can keep an eye on it. And then I found a factory PCV hose that was pre-molded that worked to go around this turbo inlet. I just had to shorten it a couple inches. Since the turbo is rotated, I needed to have something that could slide in there. And I was foolishly trying to make some, uh, like a non-molded 5 8 PCV hose work. But the molded stuff, you can't beat it because it has the elbow in there. And uh, it's made to sneak around the factory line. So... Uh, next topic on the list was to fasten the vehicle speed sensor module. It used to just be floating around down here, but this eyewire plate has a nice opening right here since my connectors are on the side. So I just uh, double-sided taped that to there. And now I am attempting to extend the brake booster hose to go into my distribution block. I need a little uh, piece of 3 8 hose for whatever reason. I don't have any 3 8 here, so I need to go get some. And then um, for this AOS... This is a version two and the coolant lines are on the top and bottom instead of just the bottom, like the new uh, version three, uh, which is kind of packed away, but they're, they're on the bottom. So um, I actually need to put some 90s on this because they have to go straight out or they will touch the turbo. Uh, and this is just half inch heater hose. So I need to go find two half inch barb elbows. And then um, once I make the mount for this, I can work on uh, getting it fixtured in there. So that's what I'm gonna go do next. I gotta go run a couple errands and then I'll either pick, up, pick back up with this video today or uh, tomorrow when the guys are wiring the flex fuel stuff in and then I'm gonna start modifying the mount for the AOS. So working through the list, just a couple things left to do. Not too bad, it's been a long build. I'm excited to get it fired up and uh, start hurting some feelings in it. Hey guys, today in the shop we have David and Kyle going to help me uh, wire up the rest of the electronics in the Forester so we can get it started on the Haltech. Uh, we won't actually be starting it today, we need to wait for Steve to come in, which I mentioned in the previous clip, but uh, we do need to wire up the last few sensors so that we can key on the car, unmarry the access port, which we previously used, make sure everything is back to stock, and then um, plug in the Haltech and get the uh, O4 STI ECU that we've been using out of the car. But I want to put it back to stock first so that if I sell it or use it for another car, it's not locked with an access port tune. So they are going to focus on flex fuel wiring, fuel pressure sensor, and intake air temp sensors, and then maybe get to the nitrous solenoids. This isn't critical to start the car, so if we run out of time before Steve comes, we won't worry about the nitrous solenoids. But in the meantime, I need to fabricate a bracket to hold this AOS uh, over here, which I mentioned previously need like a three inch spacer out of an aluminum block I have. So I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna throw you guys on the time lapse while David and Kyle start messing with the wiring. And then most of this will probably just be time lapse because there's just a lot of cleaning up to do. 
no major milestones will be happening today mounting the aos and uh connecting the last few boost lines is really everything that visibly you will see minus getting rid of all this wiring so that it's kind of tucked up a little bit cleaner and uh, buttoning it up because next weekend it's game time so uh, let's get to it Today, so I'm gonna give you a quick recap of what we did um, in that time-lapse you saw uh, David and Kyle come in and start messing with the wiring um, the time-lapse did or the battery died on the time-lapse a little ways in but honestly we spent like six hours just combing through um, some of the electrical stuff and figuring out how to mount this thing in the glove box and um, I'm not even gonna worry about any of that other footage because you couldn't see much anyway so I'm gonna show you what it looks like now um, and how we have the ECU mounted and then in the next episode we will be firing this thing up and it's time to start driving it and making all the the right noises with this spoolie boy there so obviously things are just set up we were calibrating sensors um part of the standalone uh tediousness is that it doesn't know anything about the ecu like the one you have from subaru or whoever from the factory so we have to tell it it has four cylinders it has four injectors etc so every sensor we had to go through find the calibration for it, input the values. Then we finally were able to key on the ignition system, check for fuel leaks, which there was one, uh, which we tightened up after that, and then make sure all the sensors are working. So we calibrated throttle uh, throttle position sensor, fuel pressure, flex fuel, uh, the MAP sensor, coolant temp sensor, all these things that you have to have. We have to go through manually and look at the gauges or look at the calibration specs for them put them in the ecu and then test that they work so uh everything is getting buttoned up here still have to make the mount for the aos i was supposed to do that today but i ended up shortening up some wires and helping these guys um get a couple things buttoned up and then we spent the last few hours just kind of going through the ecu and we had to update softwares and firmwares and make sure everything was set up and um we're about there we keyed on everything's working like i said it's making fuel pressure we just uh Need Steve here to do his magic and fire this thing up. So here we go uh, on the interior of the car. As you guys have seen before, we have the nice 3D printed cluster with the gauges. And now uh, the door is off the glove box, but behind the glove box, we now have the ECU with the plug for the laptop run out the corner. CAN bus that goes over to the wideband channel. This is the nitrous controller, if you can see up under there. And then the uh, boom sling adapter harness that we had goes through there and all the wiring is tucked up underneath. So it's going to look super clean when the door is closed. There won't be anything but this wire. And then when you open it, you can see the ECU. The reason that I did it this way instead of mounting the ECU up under is uh, we, I want to see the status symbol and the power symbol uh, when I'm messing with the car. So I need to see the status if there's an issue with the ECU since I'm not running the digital dash. Um, we're actually out of input, so there won't be any check engine light functionality on the gauge cluster. So I need to be able to see the status symbol on the ECU and then easily hook up the laptop. So um, it's coming together. It was nice to actually see stuff powered on for once and uh, connect the battery and get all that ready to go. Um, we still have a lot of work to do. I got to bleed the brakes because we relocated the proportioning valve. I got to bleed the clutch because uh, we swapped that over many many months ago and um, there's a couple other things that we need to do but otherwise uh, she's pretty much ready to go so I'm excited to fire this up next weekend you guys will see that in the next episode uh, in the meantime feel free to post any comments up you have or questions and we'll get to them if we can peace